Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zenfin, aka XDC. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys to hit that like button. It does help the channel grow immensely, and of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So overall, yeah, we have been kind of just, you know, steadily holding the 28k to like 29k level on Bitcoin. Um, I've been addressing to you guys a few levels that I'm really kind of watching for on Bitcoin. Um, ultimately, we'll most likely see a little bit more bleed in the altcoin market as we do see Bitcoin dominance continuing to rise up, uh, which is why I'm not taking you know any drastic you know pos positions right now on altcoins. Like when we talk about like for an example XDC, uh, we could come down a little bit lower, and I've been addressing a few you know warning signs of this. Um, right now, you know when we talk about this current market structure that we're basically in, altcoins are essentially in a bear market. Um, as Bitcoin is just continuing sideways and you know again Bitcoin dominance is continuing to rise up so uh, right now we're really kind of watching for a level that you know XDC could come down to test and uh, the next level to really kind of test after you know we break down is pretty much just those levels that we've seen going back as far as like March of 2021 which was roughly like the three cent zone which we're around that level now um, so we're watching to see if this is going to hold. If this doesn't, then, you know, things are definitely going to be a little bit concerning um, because then we can come down to test, you know, fractions of a cent. Uh, but I don't believe that we come down that low. It's most likely within that two to three centile range. Uh, so that's where I'm really kind of watching for right now for XDC. I think that as we are really kind of looking at old coins right now, we should definitely be watching Bitcoin dominance to top out at some point in time and hit resistance. Uh, you want to be a buyer for all coins when Bitcoin dominance is at a resistance point. And to really kind of just sum that up real quick, um, Bitcoin dominance, when it starts to weaken, that's when altcoins start to have that massive move up because as Bitcoin is kind of ranging sideways or even, you know, kind of pumping a little bit and Bitcoin dominance starts to fall, altcoins are starting to rise very, very fast during that time. So that's exactly what we are waiting for happening right now uh, within this market. Now, with that being said, let's kind of move on and let's talk about a few things. So first off, uh, shout out to Crypto KJ2, but we do see you're not, you know, saying SureComp and XDC Network are working together, nor am I saying XDC is being utilized, uh, but both organizations are part of the TFDI. Uh, seems to me that there's opportunity there to integrate XDC, and we do see um, the names here right here. So we do see, you know, SureComp. Uh, there's a few other names here as well, but then we also do see XDC Network, and then of course you also do see Trade Tech there. Um, and then we actually have a response from uh, Citizen of the Future Utility Theory, um, saying you know they are a Nigio partnered with SureComp. I attended this webinar. They are building an interoperable digital document uh, platform with a Nigio. And here you guys have it. Welcome to our webinar. This is talking about that trade digitization that took place on May 20th. Um, it's digitization and trade, the art of the possible. And of course, you do see SureComp there and Anigio. And then we do see, you know, the Revo platform includes the integration of the global legal entity identifier, LEI index, which seem or sorry, which stems uh, from a partnership between SureComp and the foundation behind the LEI uh, for March this year and Swedish fintech Anigio's tr uh, Trace original digital trade finance documentation. So yeah, it honestly looks like we have a confirmation that they are working together here, uh, which is pretty significant when you look at, you know, what SureComp actually is. So I actually have a few things to open up over here, but I do want to talk to you guys real quick about, you know, who they are. So first off, this is for corporate financial institutions and fintechs alike. Uh, they're really kind of building out some solid solutions. As you guys do see, there's solutions for corporate financial institutions etc um, but they are also focused on some trade finance um, opportunities as well and we're going to be addressing that and talking to you guys about that real quick um, but you guys do see the you know things that they're focused on here in terms of you know digital trade if you will uh, we provide innovative solutions for corporates financial institutions and fintechs across the globe bringing trade finance processing into the digital age you guys do see a few of the you know major pros here um, in terms of that um, it's basically everything that we have been really kind of focused on in terms of what, you know, Zinfin is doing with, you know, tokenizing trade finance, if you will. Um, we also see the customers here. We actually have that open over here. I'm going to talk to you guys about that real quick. Um, open API connectivity, you know, powerful multi-bank collaboration. This is for corporations. Um, now, the, the thing that is surprising to me is that a lot of these, you know, companies, right, that we do see 
for an example like partnerships with that are all interconnected through a few partnerships for an example Anisio is a partner of SureComp, which tells me that there's a direct connection between Anisio uh, with SureComp with, of course, Zinfin. Now, like I said, there isn't a 100% confirmation, but we do have a few things happening here. Now, for an example, Anisio partner with SureComp. I attended this webinar. They are building an interoperable digital document platform with Anisio. This could be, at the end of the day, a direct connection with, you know, XDC. If that is the case, then that's going to be significant because when you look at the customers behind SureComp, all right, it's trusted by banks and corporates or corporates across the globe, uh, more than 80 countries across the globe as well. And you do see a lot of the names here. I mean, a lot of these names you probably know, like for an example, Standard Charter, Commerce Bank, DBS. Um, these are major banks, even DZ Bank as well. A DHL is like a you know shipping you know company. Um, and there's so many other names here as well. I mean, it continues on and on. This is all talking about, you know, again, trade finance, if you will. SCB, SCB just uh, launched a few, you know, pro crypto use cases and things like that. So, you know, we're still seeing a lot of demand in that area, but you guys could definitely see the customers that they are essentially reaching out to. But also in terms of their partners, you do see their partners as well. For example, ICC. We've talked about ICC multiple times. Again, direct connection to Zenfim. We also see Swift here, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then there's a few other names here. And oh, also Coriolis is also another name that is on the technology providers here. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm saying that name right. I'm probably you know butchering a little bit, but again, you could see the direct connections in terms of the partnerships that they do have uh, compared to the ones that are already on the TFDI. Uh, the TFDI is something to definitely watch for, especially in terms of you know, Zinfim. Um, and then, of course, in terms of their about page, you guys do see their, you know, about page here. You know, SureComp is the market leader in global trade finance solutions for banks and corporations. So to me, it wouldn't make sense uh, for them not to be working with Zinfin. As Zinfin is trying to digitize this entire trade um, finance market. Um, when we talk about this market, you know, it is a $19 trillion market. I've mentioned this multiple times. Um, and when we talk about, you know, digitizing this area, you know, they are definitely going to need some help from a few names. And that is exactly why I do believe that they are working with Anigio. And that's also why we have Anigio partnered with, you know, Zinfin, because a lot of these names will all work together to make sure that this is going to fully work and, uh, you know, basically usher into that digital age. And when you see an industry pioneer for over 30 years, we provide an innovative portfolio of digital trade finance, supply chain finance, and treasury solutions, streamlining the transaction life cycle to enhance operational efficiency, ensure compliance, and drive growth with a global footprint of eight offices in Toronto, New York, Santiago, uh, Buenos Aires, London, Hamburg, um, Tel Aviv, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I'm probably going to butcher it, and Singapore. Uh, we serve as... Uh, a prestigious customer base in over 80 countries across the world. Um, but yeah, I mean, in general, when we talk about, you know, a lot of these names and we talk about a lot of these companies, uh, there's a few things that these, you know, companies have direct, you know, correlation with Zinfin with, which is again, digitizing trade finance. They're focused on the same exact areas uh, that we've been talking to you guys about for a very long time, uh, which is basically just making sure that we are ushering into a tokenized and digital age uh, for a lot of these trade documents and things like that. And that's also why I foresee the reason why they are partnered with like Swift, for an example, especially even ICC. Uh, we've talked about ICC multiple times with Zinfin. But of course, this is not the only partnership that we've been addressing for a while. In fact, I also want to talk to you guys a little bit about R3 Corda because R3 Corda, or I should say just Corda in general, is also another significant partnership that Zinfin actually has. So we do see our DASL for capital markets firms, uh, XDC DASL for capital markets firms powered by Corda. You guys could see exactly why this is pretty significant. You know, Corda provides peer-to-peer -peer architecture working with over 200 technology and industry partners. Uh, DASL, you know, builds on top of Corda, Cordite, uh, Corda Settlers SDK, and Corda Tokens SDK open and customizable. DASL provides a secure, um, extensive, uh, extensible, sorry, turnkey solution supported by industry experts. Now, this is actually pretty significant when you look at things happening around R3 Corda. Um, obviously, a lot of this is definitely focused on a few things. Um, but what I really want to focus to you guys uh, on is, you know, what this partnership actually means. So this 
isn't confirming a partnership at all. In fact, this partnership actually, in terms of Zinfin working with R3 Corda, goes all the way back to 2019. Zinfin partners with R3 Corda, a consortium uh, blockchain you know, platform with over 200 plus financial institutions. You guys do see a few re reasons why this would happen, but we do see here, you know, the standardized distributed uh, applications range from invoice factoring, global trade and finance, instant remittances, e-wallets, liquidity, relayers, university certificates, issuance, asset digitization, and global air charter. We actually do see up here, you know, Zinfin will host a number of standardized and decentralized applications on R3 Corda Marketplace and provide a bridge to access public state on Zinfin blockchain. Um, now, obviously, a lot has happened since this partnership, and we're actually going to be addressing that. We're going to be talking about it because we actually just seen a fully updated, you know, you know, partnership um, update within this going back as far as like March of 2021. Um, and this is actually, you know, something pretty significant when you actually look at this partnership in depth. Uh, but Zinfin's XDC becomes the leading token of a value on the Corda network, thanks to DSL uh, Crypto Bridge, which is, you know, again, leading us back to this. Um, but we do see here, um, so an est uh, established software firm at the nexus of emerging technology and financial services has today announced that Zinfin uh, Fintech, an enterprise-ready hybrid blockchain technology company, is the first company to utilize the DSL uh, crypto bridge. The bridge enables Zinfin's XDC to move from the XDC network over to the public Corda network to be utilized as a settlement token in inside the Corda ecosystem. This is significant when you look at the use cases that R3 Corda has. So first off, the one that I'm definitely focused on is trade finance um, and also even in terms of like supply chain, for an example. So here is their supply chain, you know, use case, for an example. Um, and you guys do see why, you know, Corda, you guys could read all about this. Um, but this is one significant use case. When you actually look at a lot of the other ones that they have, like here's trade finance, for an example, right? So the trade finance area is pretty significant because they are, you know, talking about how DLT and blockchain technology is reshaping the trade finance industry. You know, again, talking about digitization uh, within this area, the trade finance ecosystem remains an opaque and fragmented industry heavily dominated by paper processing and multiple participants along the transaction lifecycle. Notice how they are focused on paper processing here. They are basically wanting to get away from that and, you know, move towards, again, a digital age. They anticipate it or... Uh, sorry, the antiquated processes uh, burden all of the companies involved, banks, importers and exporters, issuers, um, export credit agencies and various service providers. Uh, with rising costs and operational risk, the industry has been seeking solutions to simplify, better manage and digitize trade, making it right for the benefits of blockchain technology, interested in blockchain for supply chain management. A uh, few use cases here. Um, and then, of course, you guys do see why Corda. In my opinion, when we talk about a lot of these use cases, and there's so many other ones too here, like you guys can see them, you know, there's, you know, insurance, digital currency, digital assets, etc. Um, don't worry, though, in, in terms of, you know, where Zinfin's focused on, um, we don't really need to focus on all of these because a lot of these use cases on R3 Corda will most likely be utilized, you know, on their own sort of, you know, blockchain, uh, because R3 Corda also has their own settlement token as well that they could utilize within a lot of this. Uh, but in my opinion, Zinfin is going to be focused on uh, this key, you know, area, which is, of, again, trade finance. Um, and the reason why is because when we look at things happening around the DSL bridge, uh, we actually do see our DSL is an adaptable technology solution for digital assets built on the Corda and uniquely designed to be interoperable with other DLTs to allow for uh, consolidation of technology over time. The launch of the first Corda 2 uh, crypto bridge powered by DSL uh, means that value can move freely between the Corda public network and other leading public blockchain networks with this unique Bridging technology data can be recorded privately on the Corda network while limited uh, data sets are transferable uh, to the XDC, you know, public or transferred, sorry, to the XDC public network. In essence, mitigating institutional risk and turning Corda into a hybrid network. By extension, uh, the shared ledger will connect the XDC token with every other core dApp on the public Corda network. So, I mean, technically speaking, everything will be, you know, connected within Zinfin as well. Um, a lot of this will all be interoperable as well. But in my opinion, we're going to be seeing a major shift very, very soon within the trade finance area. 
And I definitely think that when we are talking about R3 quarter, we actually do see them down here mentioning this R3 quarter bridge also enables Zenfin to significantly increase its interoperability uh, within the quarter ecosystem, providing direct access to the business networks and financial institutions active on the quarter network. These include the trade finance consortia operating on quarter, such as quarter network participants are especially relevant to Zenfin's trade finance platform. So this really kind of solidifies that they are going to be utilizing most likely Zinfin uh, for a lot of the trade finance area uh, use cases that is on Corda, which again is why I've always said pay attention to a lot of the partnerships that R3 uh, or not R3 uh, Zinfin has because the R3 Corda you know partnership is definitely something significant when you look at the ecosystem that they actually have. Uh, but with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed it, uh, this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to the notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As I said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.